Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Two Kingdom Classification, Whitaker Five Kingdom Classification, Kingdom Monera, wherein we'll talk about Archibacteria, Eubacteria, Mycoplasma, Kingdom Protista, wherein we'll discuss Chrysophytes, Danoflagellates, Euglenoids, Slime Modes and Protozoa, Kingdom Fungi, wherein we'll talk about Phycomycetes, Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes and Deuteromycetes and finally we'll conclude the lesson with a discussion on viruses, viroids and lichens. So what do you think are we going to talk about in this lesson called Biological Classification? Now you all must be wondering that we have discussed this term classification quite a few times in our previous lessons, right? So we all know what is classification and why do we classify living organisms because the variety of living organisms is huge. That is why we divide them into smaller groups so that it becomes easier for us to study about each of them. Now here in this lesson, we are not going to discuss again exhaustively on what is classification. Instead, we are going to spend time in understanding the detail of each of the groups or each of the categories into which the living organisms have been classified. However, we will not be able to discuss all the categories in this lesson itself because that will again become huge. So we will restrict ourselves to the study of three kingdoms in this lesson, that is Monera, Protista and Fungi. So we will talk about organisms like your mushroom or fungi or the viruses and bacteria. I mean the name of which itself scares thinking of the diseases that they might cause. We'll also talk about the protozoas and few other organisms which fall under any of these three categories. So we will talk about their um, nutrition, we will talk about their habitat, we will talk about the reproduction. So we'll talk about the details of each of these categories. Besides that, we will also talk about some of the phenomena associated with such organisms. Some interesting phenomena which arises because of the organisms belonging to any of these categories. And last but not the least, we will also talk about the diseases that these organisms can cause and can make us really unwell. Right? So with this brief introduction, I think we are good to go ahead with the lesson. Okay. So I am sure that all of you by this time know what is classification but just as a quick recap let me tell you once again that classification is nothing but classifying living organisms into groups based on certain set of characteristics. So this characteristic is a very very important term here. Now first of all why do we classify the living organisms that be that's because we have so many different types of organisms existing on this earth that it is really, really impossible to go and study each of them. So that is why what we did was we grouped the similar organisms together and then we started studying that group. So once you know the basic characteristics or basic features of that group, you know Roughly, you know about all the organisms which fall in that group. Now, what do I mean when I say characteristics? Well, it is a feature or quality belonging to a particular organism. So now, have you ever used this term characteristic in your day-to-day -day life? Or have you used the term feature in your day-to-day -day life? You might have used it something like this, that this guy has lots of qualities. This girl had very sharp features. So what do you mean when you use those terms, features of quality? Something which is very, very specific to that particular person. So when you are talking about a guy who has some good qualities, so that means those qualities are associated with that person, right? 
So similarly, when I answer characteristic, it is a feature which you can easily associate to a particular organism. So based upon such features, we try to find out the common characteristics between different organisms. So based upon those characteristics, we divide them into groups. Now, let me take one small example to make you understand what do I mean by characteristic. So here on the screen, you see different types of living organism. For now, you see a bird, a fish, a man and a tree. So do you think all of them are living organism? Fine. But do you think that all of them are similar? No, right? There are a hell lot of differences between any two of them. So when I say, give me a characteristic of a bird, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe the feathers, the flight. Birds can fly. So flight is a characteristic of a bird. Similarly, fishes can swim. So swim is a characteristic of the fish. For trees, trees are immobile. They cannot move from one place to another. But trees can prepare their own food with the help of sunlight. So they can photosynthesize. So that is again a characteristic of the tree. So in this way, each and every living organism has certain set of characteristics. So first of all, we have to study those characteristics and based on the common characteristics, we can put them into different groups. So that is what is the idea of classification. Now, how did it all start? Now, people started this, uh, people got this idea of classifying organisms long time back. Because long time back itself, scientists got to know that there are so many variety of organisms that we cannot study each of them in detail. So let us start classifying. Now, what should be the basis of classification? I mean, there are so many characteristics in living organisms. You consider their food habits, you consider their uh, look and feel, or you consider their behavior, or what are you going to consider in order to classify them, right? For example, let me take this example. If you look at your class, in, in your school, if you look at your classroom, you can divide the students in your class based on many things. For example, if you divide the students based on gender, so you will end up in having two groups. One is for boys, one is girls. Similarly, if you start dividing students based on uh, based upon age, so pe students with different ages will fall in different groups. Similarly, you can also um, classify students based on their marks, based on their marks which they scored in their last exam. So there are many different ways you, in which similarly we can classify living organisms. So first of all, an attempt to classify living organism was taken by Aristotle. So how did he try to classify organisms? He tried to keep things quite simple. He tried to keep the animals and the plants separate. So he tried to, because he thought living organisms would mean only plants and animals, nothing else. So he started classifying animals based on habitats, based on the places where they live. So he divided the animals into three groups. The first group was the terrestrial animals, that is the animals which live on land. For example, cat, dog, human beings, elephant, lion, tiger. So they all fall under the category of terrestrial animals. Aquatic animals or those who live in water like fishes, sharks, whales, sea urchins, octopus and there are so many other aquatic plants which are also there. So they all fall under the category of aquatic. And third one was aerial that is those animals which spend most of their time in the air. So that would obviously cover birds. So this was his attempt to classify living organisms. He also tried to classify the plants into three types based upon their size. So he divided plants into so what did he do? He also tried to classify plants into three categories. Herbs, that is the very small plants. Shrubs, the medium-sized plants, like a rose plant, you can take for an example. And the trees, that is the huge plants, like a banyan tree or a palm tree. So they will fall under the category trees. So that is how he tried to classify plants based upon their size. 
He also tried to classify animals based upon the presence or absence of blood, organisms with blood in one group, organisms without blood in another group. But then this type of classification was not very effective because it was seen that even though there were several animals falling under the category of terrestrial animals, but all of them are very different from one another. So it was very hard to consider them in the same group. Similarly, when you look at the aquatic animals, if you compare a fish with um, something else, like uh, with an octopus, so they are very different. So it was hard to consider them to be of the similar kind. So Aristotle's attempt to classify the living organisms was not very successful. Moreover, he only considered some specific things which are very easily noticeable by us. But other than that also, there are a lot of variety of living organisms which will fall in neither of the category. There are a lot of living organisms which live both in water as well as land. So where do we put them? Do we put them under terrestrial or we put them under aquatic? So because of so many things, this attempt of classification was a Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.